Hello and welcome to a very special Car Dealer Live today. I'm Rebecca Chaplin from Car Dealer and joining me today is David Peel, Managing Director of Peugeot UK, here at what is the wonderful new Robinson Day store in yep, Chiswick. Exactly. Um, so if we start at the beginning first, obviously we're wearing masks today, which yes. is um, as things continue to change. Sure. But how was it when Peugeot first, well, when the UK first went into lockdown for, from your perspective? Um, well, I think, I think it hit everybody much quicker and faster than you know, anybody expected. And, um, you know, I think we, we were, were proud as a team that very, in the very early days, mm -hmm. um, we, we started dialogue very quickly with our network. Um, we set up an uh, internal sort of task force where we had about 20, uh, 25 different work streams covering all areas of the business. And um, we made a point of communicating with our dealer network twice weekly in those early days with the National Dealer Council mm -hmm. where we were sharing all the latest information because everything was moving very quickly. Um, and we can, we've continued that really up until today. So even now we have a weekly call with all of our general managers where we continue to support them mm -hmm. and continue to keep them up to speed with you know, all of the changes uh, that, are, that are happening. But of course, you, um, you guys have had the face masks in store for as a kind of commitment for a lot longer than most places. Yeah, so, so um, PSA, you know, as a global company, um, right from the very start, made sure that we had the, the very best advice. And we we uh, implemented the right protocol globally across mm. all of our factories and all of our retail sites. So we were fortunate enough to have masks and glasses right in the, in the early days. Um, and all of our PSA buildings have, have really remained very robust when it comes to um, the right safety protocol because putting our customers and our employees uh, and our staff first uh, has been the absolute paramount um, focus for everybody in the group worldwide. Mm. Has, have you had a good response from your staff and your dealerships? Yes, I, I think, you know, it's, as, as we'll find today, it's, it's not comfortable to wear these masks, but I, I think when you look at you know, what the NHS in the UK have done during that period of time, you know, mm. working in extreme conditions, wearing masks. I think everybody appreciates that wearing a mask just to go into an office or into a, into a car showroom is, is, is not much to, to put up with when, mm. uh, you know, we've had the NHS doing such fantastic jobs for us yeah, uh, during that period. And um, so today is the final day of September as well. So it, we obviously, we're, we're very appreciative that you're yep. here talking to us yep. um, on what is, I'm guessing, a very, very busy day. But it, it certainly is, yeah. It's, uh, September, as always, is a busy month, but um, because COVID kicked in in early March, we, you know, the industry lost half of the March uh, registrations. Mm. So September, without doubt, will be the biggest month of 2020. Um, and as always, you know, everybody's pushing and um, ju juggling at the end of the month for sort of market share. So, yes, we're, all of the teams are very busy and, you know, all hands to the pump today to, to close September strongly. So um, new cars, really strong though for you guys. Yes, yeah, so I think you know, from a Persia perspective, we started the year very positively. Um, we had a national business meeting in January where we, um, we communicated to our network that we had 12 new models in 2020, yeah. <laughs> seven of which uh, are low emission vehicles or mm. EVs um, and plug-in hybrids. So it's, it's an unprecedented year for Persia as far as the product evolution. Of course, it's an unprecedented year for all of us with mm. COVID. Um, so, you know, throughout the year, we've, we've been launching new models um, virtually every month. Yeah. Um, and we've had this transition to uh, electric um, this year as well across seven of our models. So, so yeah, we've, we've got a very strong database, um, a loyal customer base. And of course, all of the new models that you can see today from Peugeot um, has meant that we've, our order books and order banks for new cars have been really strong. Uh, and September especially is going to be a, a strong month for us. What's the response been like? Because the E208 looks amazing. Um, but what's the response been generally from customers to your new electric models? Well, you know, 208 won European Car of the Year. Mm. Um, so that was back in, in, in Feb, March. So that was a great start of the year. Um, but I think, you know, the evolution, everybody can tangibly see that... Um, the Peugeot product now is, is at a different level than it's been uh, historically. And our, our aim as a brand is to be challenging the best high-end generalists mm. um, you know, globally. So, and we really feel now with the product we've got that we're in a position to be challenging the best high-end generalists, uh, certainly in the UK. So, so yeah, it's, 
if, if anything, we've, we've, we've been short of supply. So it's, uh, right. you know, in, in a time when um, everybody had to shut factories mm. um, and we were no different um, at that. So, you know, we, we've got 12 new models, seven new LEVs and a time when the factory was closed for a couple of months. So, uh, so yeah, it's, we, our product's in real demand this year. Right. And so in September, have you kind of been pushing the limits of what new cars you get hold of? or? Um, no, we, we've had enough. Mm. But we're, we're in a situation that we're close to being sold out um, wow. in quite a few of our new models, um, which, is, which is unprecedented for us. Um, but it does mean that we're building order banks for the future. So our model for many years has been a model where we would do 70% of our sales, new car sales, in the month for the month. Mm. Um, we're now moving to you know, a model where we're having to take orders for future months, which is much healthier for everybody because there's not so much of a rush in the month. It gives better customer satisfaction and it allows us to build cars in the right models and mixes to what customers are, are requesting. So, so our model's getting much healthier as well through, through the new models mm. and COVID in a way has helped us. So throughout the rest of the year though, are dealers gonna be able to get hold of the new cars they need? Yes, we, we, you know, we've, got, uh, we've got enough to see us through to the end of the year with the production that's coming, but the peak of September has obviously put the pressure on us because mm. um, you know it's such a large month. But uh, yeah, we you know the supply is coming, um, but it just means that we're starting to sell from build rather than selling from stock. That's really cool. Which is a healthier place to be for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I, I mean, selling online has been kind of a massive turnaround for yeah. people over the last few months. But you guys were doing it quite yeah, well, so, last so, year, so, was it? So no, we started in 2017. Oh wow. Um, so we we had a completely online platform mm. from January 2017, which allowed a customer to select a car, mm. uh, select their finance, get a part exchange valuation, pay a deposit, and complete sale completely online. And that's even without us seeing the part exchange. We were taking uh, the risk on the part exchange. So we've had that since 2017. And, it, and it's progressively um, been building. Um, the important part with our selling online is that Every single sale goes through the network. Mm. So we work very collaboratively with the network. We've got every one of our 183 retailers signed up to participate. So it's not a threat to the network. Mm. It's, it's, it's moving into a, a, a sort of different channel um, for, for, for customer demand, which is moving more to digital. And certainly through COVID, we've seen our sales online sort of double uh, in the really? period. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's brilliant. Uh, there's, still, there's still a relatively small percentage of what mm. we do but the sales have certainly really accelerated in the last few months. I remember at the time it was a really good thing because they could either choose a new model and spec it or see what was in stock exactly. and go. Exactly, exactly. Um, so and, and, that, yeah. and that's still the case. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and people are, I guess, you know, being forced to use digital more. Yeah. We all are, aren't we? I think everybody's got used to using Skype and Zoom and everything else. And it, it, it certainly, uh, we've seen the traffic levels through our selling online platform certainly increase um, significantly mm. in the last few months. And so we've got to talk about this fabulous place we are today. We have, yeah. And so this is Robins of Day. Yes. It's, it's, You're this old. Is, yeah, this, so this is Robins of Day Chiswick. Yep. So this is, it's, I think we're calling it West London now. Right. But this is on the site of the existing uh, Persia Chiswick site, which has been the flagship Persia site for as long as I can remember, many, mm. many years. Um, and this is now a tri-band brand flagship representing Persia, as, as you can see here, mm. but also DS and also Citroen, and also an indoor used car department and an indoor service department split over four levels. Wow. So it's, it's on the busiest roundabout, arguably in Britain, but <laughs> maybe in Europe. Um, and we now allow, have the facility for customers to, to enter the site and park internally. Yeah, in which is amazing. Car park, which is amazing. <laughs> um, and, you know, the, and, and have the opportunity to choose a used car, three brands, mm. and have their car serviced. So it's a huge investment um, on behalf of the PSA group, but it's, it's here in central London um, as the flagship PSA site, yeah. Um, How long has it been in the works? So I've been uh, MD of Persia now for four and a half years. I was the chief exec of Robinson Day for eight years previous to that. And I think halfway through my tenure of that role, we put the plans in place for this site as it is today. Right. So, so I guess myself and the team were um, responsible with James Weston, who is now the CEO of Robinson Day, 
a, a, a build in this site in the way it's built to try and maximize the efficiency of the size of the plot we have and to fit in three brands. So, 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 so to be there at the start, maybe seven or eight years ago, and to be here today in it, mm -hmm. it, it really, it really exciting. You know, I'm really proud for what the team have done, um, you know, to, to get the investment and to be able to, to put this together at a time when, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging times for everybody. Mm. So yeah, really exciting times for us. Even, it, you're obviously sharing, I think we said earlier, rather yeah. than giving away, but sharing a little bit of what was your flagship site. Yeah. So how does that feel? Are you guys working, is it kind of a signal that you three brands are working closer together? Well, we, we've worked together, you know, seven years ago, eight years ago, when we conceptually sort of put this together. We were working together then. Um, you know, the PSA, brands are positioned to attract a different customer base. Mm. So, you know, we're confident that a customer coming on this site um, has a choice of a Citroen, has a choice of a Peugeot, has a choice of a DS. Each three have a different customer demographic. Mm. So we're confident that we can maximize the opportunity and, and, and maybe, as you're sort of alluding to, not lose out to another brand. Mm. Um, because we feel the demographics, the way we position our product, um, you know, it, it, it fits everybody. So there's no overlap on this site, I would say, for customer demographic. Do you think we'll see more stores like this um, for the three brands? Um, well, we there, there are quite a few in the UK yeah. now. Um, I don't know the exact number, but certainly within Robinson Day, which is the um, wholly owned um, retail group of PSA, mm. um, there's many sites that are now tri-brand. Um, so, you know, we... We've worked with our network for four and a half years, putting network profitability right at the top of our agenda. Uh, and of course, big sites like this cost a lot of money. Mm. So we're trying to be realistic as well to make sure that our investors um, have the right opportunity to get the right level of return from their investment with us as PSA. And in a lot of cases, having two or three brands on, in one premises makes the site much more efficient and much more viable um, for the for the investor, mm. in this case PSA, but you know we have private investors, regional, national groups that uh, are making the same sort of decisions to do two or three franchises uh, in one building, um, and, and we're supportive of that because mm. you know our, our, our brands are positioned differently, and it allows the investor to be efficient and, and profitable, which is really important. Do you think we'd ever see a Vauxhall showroom in here as well, or is it? Well, Vauxhall part of the PSA portfolio now so yeah without doubt mm. um, I'm not saying they would be on this site because we probably don't have the, the, the scale and scope to now do it but if you're asking me would there be a Peugeot Citroen DS mm. Vauxhall site yeah for sure that's really cool and we know you were all about profitability for your dealers but go, just going back to the electric cars has there been a lot of investment for them when it comes to being able to sell them um, well we <coughs> excuse me <coughs> We used 20, 2019 as our uh, transition year. Mm. So in that year, we did ask every um, Peugeot retailer to have the right infrastructure in place. But we did work very closely with everybody to make sure that we weren't um, over onerous on what we've acquired. So yes, of course, they've got to have charges on the site. But we made sure that the size of charges they had were the most cost effective solutions. Um, so yes, there was investment, mm. um, but it wasn't substantial you know, to cause anybody re any concern. We had everybody um, commit and, and implement that in 2019, ready for this year. So, um, so yeah, and, you know, you know we, we, we've now got a, a very unique offering with, within Persia, which is giving the customer the power of choice. Mm. So we don't just have an electric car like some vans. You know, you can now, within the Persia range, choose your model and then choose your powertrain. Mm. Um, and by 2023, you'll effectively be able to choose your powertrain on every car and every van in our range, whether it's petrol, diesel, or, or electric or plug-in hybrid. So, so it, it, you know, we are accelerating very quickly into the, um, you know, the true um, factory electric vehicle and plug-in hybrid. Mm. Um, so that investment, I'm sure, is going to be well, well placed. Yes, <coughs> sounds very exciting. Excuse me. No, sorry. <laughs> um, so... We've obviously got lots more models coming in. Yeah. But how is the dealer network in general? Is it healthy and how are you feeling? I mean, four, <coughs> four and a half years in now? Sorry, can you, you say that again? <laughs> You're four and a half years into your role now. Um, yes. Do you so, feel like you've achieved what you wanted to? 
Yeah, when I started, and we, we've spoken a few times, Rebecca, um, you know, at the start, I was fairly clear on what we were trying to achieve, mm. and that was to operate professionally, um, treat everybody fairly, make sure that we don't do anything silly, so not force the market, be obsessional about residual values. You know, all of the Persian models are now in the top quartile. Um, to give an example, when I started four and a half years ago, Persia was bottom of the NFDA survey. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're now in the top 10. Mm. Um, so we have a very collaborative working relationship with the network and the network profitability during that period has, has, um, <clears throat> has increased significantly as well. Um, you know, the network will be at a position of profit on average at the end of this year. Now, taking into account COVID, wow. um, you know, that's, that's not a bad position to be in. Um, so, so we, you know, we have worked very hard through the COVID period to support the network with target guarantees and, and other areas of support to make sure that we look after them as much as we can from mm. a financial perspective. Of course, this year, there will be investors as part of our network that are finding it tough. Mm. But we're trying our very best to support everybody. Do you think that, <clears throat> I mean, this is judging on whether we get a better 2021 than 2020's been, but do you think that some dealers will look at how they've done this year and think, yeah, it was really tough, but next year is going to be really good if we can keep this going? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, when we started back in January, when we had 12 new models, mm. we had, you know, top court on RVs, we had an engaged network, you know, we, we've got a fantastic product range. Um, 2020 was going to be our year in the UK, and of course, COVID potentially knocked a big hole in it. So, yeah, for sure, 2021 is going to be a great year for Persia. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today, David. <clears throat> thank you, everyone, for watching. If you want more videos, you can click live at the top of the page if you're on Car Dealer Magazine or hit subscribe on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see lots more. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Rebecca.